This is the Brabant Bulletin brought to you by the European Brabant Registry of America, where people, passion, and preservation are our mission. Hi, everybody. I'm Stacey Pearsall, one of the contributing editors to the Brabant Bulletin, and I'm here today with Melissa Brown, one of our members with the European Brabant Registry of America, and we're really lucky because she not only has a, a wonderful Brabant mayor, but she's got an appendix, which is really, really special. But I'm not going to tell that story. Uh, I'm going to let her do it. Welcome, Melissa. Hello. Thank you for having me. So tell me a little bit about yourself. How did you get into horses initially? My mom had a horse when she was younger. And in middle school, she wanted me to start taking lessons. She just said it was a nice skill to have. And so I enjoyed it. And then when we got where I got to high school, my mom decided, you know, it's time for you to get your own horse. So the first horse I ever got was a uh, sassy Appaloosa, but he taught me a lot. And then a few years later, I saw draft horses and I just fell in love. And I've been with draft horses ever since. Very cool. And what breed was she? American Belgian. Okay. How did you stumble on the Brabants? I can't remember the first place I saw them, but a friend of mine, Heather, you know, I asked her about it. She's really into drafts too, as you know. And uh, she's like, yeah, they're amazing. We started talking about them. And I've always been more of a, I guess, against the grain type of person. Mm -hmm. I like the more like unique things and unique breeds. And so I really fell in love with Brabants and everything about them. And, you know, they're more unique and need some building up in America, you know. So tell me, how did you locate your mare? Your your Brabant story. Let's let's talk. Um, so I started looking for breeding farms, um, but most of the ones I was finding, I don't know if I just wasn't finding the right ones, but I wasn't finding any that had you know the higher percentages. Most of them were around fifty to seventy. I was really hoping for something a little higher, but I still got you know on some wait list and whatnot. And then I just happened to see in a comment somebody posted Luca was for sale. And she was 100 percent, you know, young, five years old. And so I messaged about her, went and saw her and picked her up. Where are you located? I'm in Ridgeway right now. Ridgeway, South Carolina? Yes. yes. Okay. And where was Luca located? Um, she was in Blackville, South Carolina. Yes. So not very far at all. Right. And I'm in South Carolina, too, which uh, it, it's kind of crazy. There aren't very many Brabants in the United States, but to have this sort of concentrated population in the southeast is really, really nice. Right. So you you traveled to, to Blacksville, South Carolina, looked at Luca. What was your first impressions? It was, was it the first time you saw one in person? I can't remember if I had seen Heather's before or after Luca, but she was still, you know, she was only five. So she wasn't fully finished filling out push, push, push. Uh, so she wasn't that huge massive Brabant but I mean, you know she was big and you could definitely tell she was big or going to be and she was just so sweet and loving even to you know she'd only known uh, her people so far mm -hmm. and you know just the way like she came up to me and was loving on me you know I just fell in love with her it's awesome congratulations and when you got her home, you started building a relationship with her. What stood out about the breed to you compared to the other draft horses that you've had in your life? She was a lot kinder uh, and definitely more of a, I guess, more kind to me, but a little sassier with the other horses. Because if she wanted my love, she was getting my love. Mm -hmm. um, and she would tell all the others to go away. Uh, not awesome. even like feeding time. You know, I know all horses get sassy around feeding time. But I, you know, just be out there, no treats, no anything. And she'd be like, no, like, I want pets now. Y'all got to go away. So she's very possessive over me. I've never had another horse be quite like that. How old is she now? How old is Luca now? Uh, she's eight. And when did you decide to breed her? Um, I knew even when I started looking for a Brabant, I wanted to breed. And you kind of went a unique route for the breeding. Yes. Yes. Tell me a little bit about your decisions and what what were behind the choices that you made in terms of selecting a stud to cover your mare. So, of course, you know, you always think purebred. So I was debating on Brabant. I did reach out to a few stud owners. Then I got a little worried about, you know, this was Luca's first baby. This is my first baby. So, of course, that fear is there of something might go wrong because you never know breeding. And so my thought was, well, maybe if I bred something smaller, it would, you know, be less risk 
And so I decided to breed for a mule. And so I found a decent sized jack, you know, nothing too big, nothing too small. And um, bred for that, just hoping for, you know, a, a smaller baby, just not this giant draft horse that I just didn't want Luca getting hurt. More so helped me in my anxiety of breeding. Because uh, I really, like, you know, if something ever happens, I'll I'll be devastated. I know in breeding something will at some point, but it's still a scary aspect, you know. Mm-hmm. So how did the delivery go? Great. She didn't show like any signs. I mean, she was bagging up, of course, but her bag went down. And even my vet came out the day before and she's like, yeah, you know, she doesn't really look like she's about to go. <laughs> and the next morning I walked out to feed breakfast and there he was. So I completely missed it. <laughs> but of course, the vet came out afterwards, checked her and she's like, I've never seen a mare not even bruise. She showed no sign that she had just had a pull at all. So it went very well. Great. And so you said you had a boy. Tell me a little bit about him. So his name's Rivali Scale. He is a sassy little guy, uh, but he's so loving, like just like Luca. And he'll come up, he'll want hugs. So he'll put his head up and he wants to put his head over mine. And then he'll scratch my back while I scratch his withers. And, you know, just I spent all day that first day with them. So we're very attached at this point. Um, well, I know you don't see a lot of Brabants for one, but right. you, you rarely ever see a Brabant mule. Have you come across other people that have Brabant mules? And um, do you find personality wise that the mules carry more of the Brabant personality or do you think it's a 50-50 mix? I haven't noticed or I haven't seen, especially in person, anybody else with a Brabant mule. Uh, really, I really haven't been around too many mules to begin with. I've always wanted some because I've heard really good, you know, once you go to a mule, you'll never go back and everybody loves them. Um, So I'm not too familiar with, I guess, mules and their attitudes normally. Um, But he definitely does share a lot. He he got a lot from Luca and just that loving personality. Uh, I mean, I met the Jack and he was a nice Jack, but not near as loving as Rivali and Luca are. Mm -hmm. What are your plans for Rivali? Are you going to keep him? Are you going to train him? Yes. So I'm keeping him. I made that decision long ago. I would keep my first baby. I've had a lot of people inquire about buying him. I'm like, I'm sorry, but he's not going anywhere. So, you know, I've been trying to work with him on little things, you know, just trying to make him a good, you know, baby, because I know he's going to be very big very soon. I just got into, it's called working equitation. So I'm hoping to maybe gear towards that with him in the future for like a show and riding career and then just, you know, trail ride and enjoy them. So who did you breed her back to? Uh, I bred her to an Oldenburg stallion because my current riding mare is, uh, she's getting older. So she's getting nearer to retirement. So I'm hoping to get more of a sporty horse, kind of like what symbols is just something that can go out, maybe jump some things, you know, so a little bit of a mix between draft and something smaller. Tell me a little bit about the Oldenburg stallion you chose. Uh, so his name is Iconicus. He was into eventing. And so he, you know, he's a nice jumper. He throws nice babies. A lot of his babies are in the show world and doing really well. So I decided to go with him. And he's a very nice looking stallion. I love that you are doing these crosses. I think that's becoming more and more popular. Um, for people who who are looking to develop a a warm blood that's specific to the type of discipline they want to do. And I think, I don't know about you, but the Brabant is, has such a great personality. They're so willing and sweet in your pocket. Mm -hmm. Um, I like to say that they're, for me, predictable. I mean, I grew up on an Arabian farm and talk about unpredictability and in some ways, instability. But I think the the Brabant themselves, they feel like they're so well-balanced in the mind. Mm -hmm. Um, but that just kind of, it puts me at ease as well. Like as I get older, I don't want to fall off on anything. And, um, writing them is for me, like writing with a babysitter, you know, they're always going to take care of me. The more I talk to folks who are crossing with the Brabant, they tend to carry that personality trait with them. So I'm really glad to hear that Rivali does. And, And I, I hope your Oldenburg cross will have the same results. I'm looking forward to seeing that baby on the ground. Yeah, it's me too. What type of writing do you like to do? 
Uh, mainly I do like trail riding. So do a lot of Western riding. I do enjoy jumping, but I haven't done it as much lately. You know, my main mare is getting older, so I don't jump her as often as I used to, or, you know, back when I used to take lessons in middle school and whatnot. So I was kind of, you know, I was hoping to get with the Oldenburg, maybe something that could jump with me. And then the working equitation, I'm just started taking lessons in that. And that is a, you know, just kind of, if you like writing English, write English. If you like Western, ride Western. Uh, they more so look at you and the bond between your horse. So I like that a lot about it. So I'll probably do more so of a Western style. What is the fundamentals of this, this equitation? Like, I, do you have to do a series of like walk, trot, canter, or is it more like um, obstacles? It's a lot of like dressage with obstacles. So there are a couple different events in it. So there's the... But there's kind of the speed trial where you go through these obstacles just basically as fast as you can. Uh, obviously, you know, completing the obstacles. And then there is basically the same thing with the same obstacles, but they look more so at your bond and how you you and your horse work together. So it's a lot more of a oh, it's ease of handling. So how well the horse handles, how well you handle the horse mm -hmm. and how you all work together. A lot of dressage movements and like, you know, your side passing, you're having to use those, you know, yielding and whatnot to open gates and close gates a little quicker than kind of your typical obstacle shows you might see. Right. Um, and just a lot of that, like how well you can communicate, basically. <laughs> what are your future plans for Luca? Are you going to continue to use her as a, a broodmare or will you uh, retire her from breeding? Um, I'll use her for a broodmare as long as she stays nice and healthy. You know, I bred back this year because my vet said, you know, she looks great. Do it again. But so as long as she's good and her health's good, you know, I do want to breed her. Uh, that's the main reason, you know, I'm getting into Vermont is I'd like to breed them. Mm -hmm. So I will be looking once I move and start getting more of my pasture set up there. I'll be looking to get more breeding mares, maybe a stud. Hopefully in the next few years we'll be moving to Edgefield. Uh, it's not too far above Aiken, South Carolina. Be sure to look up Limestone Farms on Facebook and you can view some of Melissa Brown's horses on the European Brabant Registry of America's Brabant Bulletin blog. So be sure to visit europeanbrabant.com and go to the blog. If you haven't done so yet, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any fun horsey content. See you next time.